The last area that we can address with some setups is the whole notion of incompatibility. Now generally speaking this is one where uh, not a lot of tweaking is needed uh, but if, if so then there's some things we can do. So naturally precedence is preferred over best price if your business allows. Uh, and the reason for that is in order to determine best price if there are 10 options available it has to continue and actually evaluate every one of those options. If you're using precedence then you need to be very careful with how your precedences are set. Um, it's very easy to get in a situation where you might tweak the precedence level assigned to one modifier and the behavior then doesn't operate consistently across. So just pay attention remembering that the lower precedence number is the one that will win. So higher precedence numbers are more generic. Uh, the more lower the number, the more specific the rule is that will be applied. So the last target we'll take a look at is priceless. Remember that when a given line is priced, the very first thing the engine wants to do is assign a price list to that line and a, and a list price as a starting point for any adjustments. Two ways that that can happen. Either you provide a price list to the engine, which is the preferred method, or the price list can be selected. On the provide a price list to the engine side, there's either order management defaulting rules that can be used. Uh, Users can also select a price list. I would advocate against this. Uh, I'm a believer of, with all the rules and capability, that we should really be able to limit any type of pricing decisions that someone entering the data should be making. And the defaulting rules are pretty powerful. And again, as with pricing attributes, we can define functions to do default rules for us. So don't hesitate to create a custom PL SQL function. And in my experience, those are usually fairly simple to provide a, a way to default a price list. But if for whatever reason you are unable to have the price list defaulted or don't want to have the user select it, you can configure the application so that the pricing engine figures out which price list to use based on conditions. And here we need to use that or take a look at the qualifiers, make sure they're very selective. We definitely want to inactivate any dead price lists that are out there. And we also want to make sure that we're using our qualifiers uh, properly. So going back to the example I used before of lists of customers, replace those with some type of qualifying attribute, making sure we have redundant conditions removed, etc. So those are the things that we can look at from the standpoint of how we're actually using the pricing attributes and qualifiers and modifiers, etc. Now we'll show a couple of examples. The first two come from uh, the same client that I've been working with. It's a real estate title insurance company. And just a little background. So this company sells title insurance policies that are modeled as item numbers. Those policies can be written typically in one or more states. And for any given state, a given item, i.e. a given policy, will have a different pricing rule based on the state, sometimes based on the county where the policy is written and also on the type of rate that's applied to that policy. If it's a new policy, the term is a basic rate. It could be a reissue. It could be a, a refinance. Uh, if you have an owner's title insurance policy remitted in uh, conjunction with the lender's title insurance policy, those are terms simultaneous, those get specific pricing treatment. In this particular organization, states were distributed across operating units, so one state would typically fall within a given operating unit. And the application was originally configured so that based on the information entered on the order, we would derive the price list that would be used. So in our initial configuration, we define state as a qualifying attribute. We also define county as a qualifying attribute, although that wasn't used in uh, too many situations, only a couple. We had one price list that was representative of each combination of state and line type. Line type is what we use to model the rate type mentioned before, so the basic reissue refinance. This was done, uh, number one, because it matched the way the client viewed their pricing, their price books, their definitions were all organized by state and rate type. And the other reason is we can't use line level qualifiers. The only qualifiers that we can use in a price list, price list situation are at the header level. Because we had the application determine which price list to use since it varied by line. We didn't want the user selecting it. 
The application could, depending on the type of item that's chosen, the rate type, etc., could be looking at upwards of 200 lines to process. Now, for one line, that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you consider the fact that an order might have 800 up to 1,000 or more lines, now you're talking a very large number of lines and data that the engine has to mash through before it even determines which price list it's going to use. So here's an example of the one of the price lists we set up. This shows the uh, Arkansas refinance. The qualifiers that you can see, we have the line type representing the different rate type, in this case refinance. Uh, we have the remittance state, in this case Arkansas. In some cases, again, you might see county included uh, as a qualifier, and that all validations pass is another function that we had created common to all the price lists. But this is the general structure. So imagine uh, up to four, and in some states they had additional rate types, four or five of these price lists per state.